Benji Bear, fancy meeting you here. How was London? It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 10, lesson at number 9, the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. In the last lesson, we were looking at the quick method of working out the inverse of a 2x2 two two matrix, and we found that it can be done from scratch rather than using what we learned in lesson 7, where we had set it up with the matrix A multiplied by the inverse to give us I. There's a quicker way of doing it. Again, there's another way of working out the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix, and this is how it is done. What we use is something from the past. We use, boom, 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 the identity matrix. So here we go with a worked example. Example one, find the inverse of the three by three matrix A, which has the entries one, 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 two, negative three, negative one, and five, two, three. The way this works, step one, you want to set up the augmented matrix, matrix A, and then matrix I. And as we all know, I is your identity matrix. So we have matrix A and beside it, the identity matrix. We have the top row, which we call row one, the middle row, which we call row two, and the bottom row, which we call row three. The aim of the game is to change the left-hand side into the identity matrix using a series of elementary row operations. This should hopefully remind you of what we did at the very start of this chapter when we were working with Gaussian elimination. It's the same idea. So how is that done? Well the same as Gaussian elimination, the idea is to change these first two entries in row 2 and row 3 to 0 using row 1. So let's do that. So for this we want to change the first entries in row two and row three, this is what we had just on the last page. And to do that, well, if you do two, take away two, that would give you zero. So row two would go to row two, take away two, row one. If we do that, well, the top row is going to stay as it is. So row one will not change. That will stay as one, 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 and then one, zero, zero. The second row, well, if we do two, take away two, that will give us zero, which is what we want. We'd also have negative three, take away two times one. We would have negative one take away two times one again. We would have zero take away two times one. We would have one take away two times zero, and we'd have zero take away two times zero. So this is our new row two. We also wanted to change this entry to zero again using row one, and if we do five take away five, that will give us zero. So we'd have to do row three take away five, row one. So doing that, well, five take away five times one will give us a zero. Woo! That's what we want. If we do two take away five times one, we would also th do three take away five times one. We would do zero take away five times one, and we would do zero take away five times zero, and one take away five times zero. And that is our new row three. So we've now changed these first two entries to zero. The next step, what we do after that, is we are wanting to change the second entry of row three to zero. So we want to change this entry to zero. And remember to do that, we have to use a combination of row two and row three. If we use row one here, well, that will change this from a zero to something else, but we need to keep these zeros here. So to do that, to change the second entry of row three to zero using a combination of row three and row two, what we can say is if we multiply row three by five, well, if you times that by five, you get negative 15. What would you do with the negative five? Well, you would have to times that by three to again get negative 15, and then you'd have to subtract them, and you have to take them away. If you do that, just double check that, well, that would give you negative 15. If you're taking away, well, if that was negative 15, two negatives make a positive, so you would add it and you would get zero. So, if we times that by five, take away three times zero, that's just going to be zero, we know that. That will also give us zero. Five times row three, so five times negative two, take away three times row two, that will give us negative one. If we do five times negative five, take away three times negative two, that gives us negative 19. 5 times 0, take away 3 times 1, will give us negative 3. And 5 times 1, take away 3 times 0, will give us 5. Woo! Next step, after that, we want to change the third entry of row 2 to 0. So the third entry of row 2 is this one. So that is the one we want to change to 0. 
And to do that, well, what we do next is we use a combination once again of row two and row three. Don't use row one here because then I'll change this from zero to something else. Let's go over the page and do that. So change the third entry of row two to zero. This is just what we had on the last page. Again, this is the one that we want to change using the rows, row two and row three. So we can say then that row two, if we keep that as it is, and we take away three lots of row three, well, that would be negative three, take away negative three, which will give us the zero. So that would work out. So doing that then, row one is remaining just as it is. Row three is remaining just as it is. And it's row two that is changing. Row two will go to row two, take away three, row three. So zero, take away three times zero will be zero. Negative five, take away three times zero is negative five. Negative three, take away three times negative one will give us a zero. Woo! That's what we want. Negative two, take away three times negative 19 will give us 55. One, take away three times negative three will give us 10. Zero, take away three times five will give us negative 15. And that is our new row two. What we have to do next will be our getting close to the identity matrix. Remember your identity matrix is when you have ones here and all the other entries are zero. So really the other ones that we need to change to zero would be these two. So to do that, let's change the second entry of row one to zero. So let's change this one first of all. So change the second entry of row one to zero. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of row one and row two. We cannot use row three here because we would have one and then no matter what you multiply zero by, you get zero. So we can't add or subtract to change this to zero. So we have to use row two here. So we can say then that row one would go to, well, if we multiply this by five, we would get five. And then if we add on negative five, well, five add negative five would give us zero. So we can say then that that's going to be five row one plus row two. So doing that then, if we multiply the top row by five and then add on row two, well, five times one, add on zero would give us five. Five times one add negative five gives us the zero. Woo, that's what we want. Five times the one add on zero will give us five. Five times one add on 55 gives us 60. Five times zero add on 10 will give us 10. Five times zero add negative 15 gives us negative 15. And that there will be the new row one. What we want to do next then, well, we've got our zeros here. We've got our zeros here. This is the last entry that we need to change. So we're going to change this one using, well, again, you can't use row two because you've got a zero here and you can't add or subtract zero. Even if you multiply zero by something, again, it's not going to change us five. So we have to use row three. So we can say here, if we go over the page, this oh, is just what we had on the last page, but we want to change this third entry of row one to zero. So we're changing this value here. To do that, again, we're using row three. So we can say then that row one would go to, and if we add on five lots of row three, well, we'd have five add negative five, which would give us the zero. So row two stays as it is, row three stays as it is. One would be five add five lots of zero, which would give us five. Zero, we'd have five add five lots of negative one, which is zero. We'd have 60 add five lots of negative 19, which will give us negative 35. We have 10 add five lots of negative three, which gives us negative five. And we've got negative 15 add five lots of five, which will give us 10. So that there becomes the new row one. Remember with the identity matrix, you want this main diagonal to all be ones and the other entries to be zero. Well, all of these other entries are zero. We have that, but we just need to change these entries to one. So how do we go about doing that? Brilliant. What we can do is, well, if you look at this top row, you can say that row one would go to, and then you just multiply through by one fifth or divide every single entry by five. So row one would go to a fifth of row one, meaning the top row will go to five divided by five is one. If you divide the zeros by five, they stay as zero. Negative 35 divided by five gives us negative seven. Negative five divided by five is negative one, and 10 divided by five will give us two, and that there will be row one. For row two, what do we do? Well, we've got negative five here, so we have to multiply that 
by a negative, first of all, to make it positive, and we also have to multiply by the fifth to go from five to one. So we can say that row two, we want to multiply that by negative one fifth. Multiply the zeros by negative one fifth and they would stay as zero. But if we multiply the negative five by negative a fifth, well, that would go to one. Again, that's what you want. Multiply 55 by negative one fifth gives you negative 11. 10 multiplied by negative a fifth gives us negative two. And the negative 15 divided by negative a fifth will give us three. So that's our new row two. Row three, well, again, we're wanting a one, but we've got negative one. So really, we're just wanting to take the negative of row three or we multiply through by negative one. If we do that, the zeros stay as they are. Negative one goes to positive one, negative 19 to positive 19, negative three to positive three, and five to negative five. So after that, you're wanting to look just at this left-hand side, and you can see that the left-hand side, you have your identity matrix. So you can say the matrix is now in the form of the identity matrix, and what you have on the right-hand side is the inverse of matrix A. So you can say the inverse of matrix A is equal to the negative 7, negative 1, 2, the negative 11, negative 2, 3, and the 19, 3, negative 5. Woo! Well done. That is a worked example. Use that to help you with page 30, working through those examples. Set up your augmented matrix and then change the left-hand side to your identity matrix. Best of luck. Enjoy. Have fun. Bye.